O beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain. For purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. And crown thy good with brotherhood. From sea to shining sea. But what kind of brotherhood does Our Lady want for us Americans? We know she follows perfectly the will of her divine Son, Jesus Christ. Since she is in perfect union with the will of God, we know what she wills. God wills. But only one question remains. What kind of brotherhood will we have? Will we have a brotherhood based on Freemasonic teachings or on Christian Catholic teachings? In an article from CatholicEducation.org, I quote, Since the decree of Pope Clement XII in 1738, Catholics have been forbidden to join the Masons and until 1983 under pain of excommunication. Scanning official documents, the Church has condemned Freemasonry and other secret societies at least 53 times since 1738 and has specifically repeated the condemnation of Freemasonry 21 times. The Orthodox and several Protestant churches also banned membership in the Masons. On November 26, 1983, with the approval of Pope John Paul II, the Sacred Congregation, whose prefect was Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger, reiterated the ban on Catholics joining the Masons. Quote, the Church's negative position on Masonic Association, dot dot dot, remain unaltered, since their principles have always been regarded as irreconcilable with the Church's doctrine. Hence, joining them remains prohibited by the Church. Catholics enrolled in Masonic associations are involved in serious sin and may not approach Holy Communion." End quote. Neither this declaration nor the 1983 Code of Canon Law imposed the penalty of excommunication on Catholics belonging to the Masons. However, the Holy See has upheld that belonging to Freemasonry and participating in its rituals is a mortal sin which prevents one from receiving Holy Communion. Our Lady's War Against Freemasonry At times, when traditional Catholics see Our Lady of America, her medal, and the seemingly Masonic symbolism, their radar is up, red flags are raised, and they may look no further into Our Lady of America after seeing that ominous, all-seeing eye. But wait! Who is Our Lady of America, and is this apparition church approved? A series of messages were conveyed by Our Lady and St. Joseph to Sister Mary Ephraim from the 1950s on through the 1970s. She was a religious sister in the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. Most importantly, the Archbishop of the time, Archbishop Paul Leopold, was the spiritual director of Sister Mary Ephraim. She was later referred to as Sister Mildred. He gave his imprimatur to the messages from Our Lady of America. Even upon citing this information based on Archbishop Paul Leopold's approval, I'm assuming you could still find yourself skeptical of the whole apparition, especially after seeing the all-seeing eye being associated with Catholicism? Isn't this something that belongs strictly to Freemasonry? On March 31, 2007, Cardinal Burke wrote a letter to every bishop in the United States stating that as he looked at the apparition canonically, 
that the message already obtained ecclesiastical affirmation, and thus already had the status as an approved church apparition. But wait, how can the church approve, not only of the message, but the medal of Our Lady of America, which very obviously has the Freemasonic symbol of the all-seeing eye. Let's take a brief look at the history of the all-seeing eye, or the eye of providence. The all-seeing eye, as it's typically known among Freemasons, or the eye of providence, as it should be known among Catholics, represents the eye of God. However, symbols often overlap and just because two or more groups use a similar symbol does not mean that it conveys the same meaning, or even necessarily that they are historically connected. For example, the ancient Egyptian eye, one of the most famous of these symbols, is the eye of Horus, which was immensely popular amongst the ancient Egyptians. According to ancient Egyptian mythology, Horus lost his left eye during a battle with his uncle Seth. This eye was magically restored by the goddess Hathor, who is believed to have been either Horus' mother or wife. Thus, the eye of Horus became a symbol of healing. Freemasonry does tend to draw on the pagan Egyptian symbol as their own in some ways. However, they do acknowledge the Christian roots of the all-seeing eye symbol as well, which is known correctly as the Eye of Providence. However, Masons refer to the all-seeing eye as the grand architect of the universe. The Eye of Providence was first depicted by Jacopo Carucci, who was an Italian Mannerist painter from the Florentine School. He trained under Leonardo da Vinci for a time, among other artists. The title of his work, featuring the Eye of Providence, is called Supper at Emmaus, and was completed in 1525. It is one of the smallest works signed and dated by the artist. The Eye of Providence makes another appearance in the Basilica of St. Mary Major. This church is a papal major basilica and the largest Catholic Marian church in Rome, Italy. It is now agreed that the present church was built under Celestine I, not under Pope Sixtus III, who consecrated the Basilica on the 5th of August, 434, to the Virgin Mary. Church building in Rome in this period, as exemplified in St. Mary Major, was inspired by the idea of Rome being not just the center of the world and of the Roman Empire, as it was seen in the classical period, but the center of the Christian world. The baptistry at the center of this 17th century chapel is the baptismal font attributed to Giuseppe Valadere and consisting of a red porphyry stone basin topped by golden sculptures. The elaborate decor of the chapel includes polychrome marble walls, colorful ceiling frescoes, gleaming gold stucco work, commemorative plaques, marble busts of church officials, and the marble altarpiece of the Assumption of the Virgin, sculpted by Pietro Bernanini, above which is a glowing image of the all-seeing eye of Providence. As you can plainly see, we have historical precedents for the use of the eye of Providence within Catholic tradition. There are many Protestants that will look at the obelisk in St. Peter's Square and talk of how the Catholic Church is pagan and endorses paganism. However, if you look to the top of the obelisk, you will notice a cross on the top. That cross on top of the obelisk contains a relic of the real cross that Jesus Christ died on inside of it. That is not because we Catholics endorse paganism, but rather, it is a declaration of Christ's triumph over paganism. In fact, paganism and Luciferianism purposely ape Jewish and Catholic symbolism. 
The fathers of the church have explained that the loss of the true faith throughout the centuries prior to Christ's coming was due to the confusion of man and demons. However, the Jews were preserved from losing the truth and the faith prior to the coming of Jesus Christ. After the death and resurrection of our Lord, St. Paul preaches to the pagans, using some of the truths they retained within their brand of paganism to teach them the fullness of the Catholic truth. Acts 17.16 Some common hand symbols we see that convey certain Christian truths which overlap with paganism are in Greek Orthodox iconography and also in early Christian iconography. The symbol of the blessing hand shapes the letters ICXC and abbreviation for the Greek words Jesus, Christ, which includes the first and last letter of each word. The hand that blesses shows the name of Jesus. The symbol also shows doctrinal truths. The three fingers used to spell the I and X also represent the Trinity, the unity of one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The thumb and the ring finger together to touch symbolize the incarnation, the union of the divine and human natures in the person of Jesus Christ. There are many other examples we could draw upon from where Satan apes and mocks the imagery of the one true triune God and his church, whether in the past or the present. But why would the Queen of Heaven ask us to use a widely known Masonic symbol in our times? Let's take a closer look at what the Masonic sect has been up to in their own words to gain a better understanding of why Our Lady would want this medal with the Eye of Providence struck. The attack on the church by masonry has been well calculated. The mode of the attack has been primarily to corrupt the family through the vices of man. These excerpts from, quote, War of Antichrist with the Church and Christian Civilization, end quote, by Monsignor George F. Dillon, was published in 1885. Monsignor Dillon sought to be obedient to Pope Leo XIII's request to tear the mask off of Freemasonry. He reveals many of the Masonic Revolutionaries' communications through his effort. The following is the war we are in and the war Our Lady wants to help us win with a final series of blows to the serpent's head. Quote, the essential thing is to isolate a man from his family, to cause him to lose his morals. He is sufficiently disposed by the bent of his character to flee from household cares and to run after easy pleasures and forbidden joys. He loves the long conversations of the cafe and the idleness of shows. Lead him along, sustain him. Give him an importance of some kind or other. Discreetly teach him to grow weary of his daily labors. And by this management, after having separated him from his wife and from his children, and after having shown him how painful are all of his duties, you will then excite in him the desire of another existence. Man is a born rebel. Stir up the desire of rebellion until it becomes a conflagration, but in such a manner that the conflagration may not break out. This is a preparation for the grand work that you should commence. When you shall have insinuated into a few souls disgust for family and for religion, the one nearly always follows in the wake of the other. Let fall some words which will provoke the desire of being affiliated to the nearest lodge. Quote, Let us then never cease to corrupt. Tertullian was right in saying that the blood of martyrs was the seed of Christians. Let us then not make martyrs, but let us popularize vice amongst the multitudes 
let us cause them to draw it in by their five senses, to drink it in, to be saturated with it. And that land which Artinus has sown is always disposed to receive lewd teachings. Make vicious hearts, and you will have no more Catholics. Keep the priest away from labor, from the altar, from virtue. Seek adoratory to otherwise occupy his thoughts and his hours. Make him lazy, a gourmet, and a patriot. He will become ambitious, intriguing, and perverse. You will thus have a thousand times better accomplish your task than if you had blunted the point of your stiletto upon the bones of some poor wretches. I do not wish, nor do you any more, my friend Nubius, to devote my life to conspiracies in order to be dragged along in the old ruts. It is corruption in mass that we have undertaken, the corruption of the people by the clergy and the corruption of the clergy by ourselves, the corruption which ought one day to enable us to put the church in her tomb. Quote, I have recently heard one of our friends laughing in a philosophical manner at our projects. He says to us, In order to destroy Catholicism, it is necessary to commence by suppressing women. The words are true in a sense, but since we cannot suppress women, let us corrupt her with the church. The object we have in view is sufficiently good to tempt men such as we are. Let us not separate ourselves from it for some miserable personal satisfaction of vengeance. The best poignard with which to strike the church is corruption, to work then even to the very end. So why would Our Lady desire the eye of Providence be struck as a part of the medal for Our Lady of America? The answer is simple. Catholics have to take back what is authentically traditional and Catholic from every mocking perversion and attack launched against the Church by the Masons. The Masons' foremost plan is to destroy purity, so Our Lady wishes to not only reclaim the eye of Providence from the Masons, but to use it against them as a weapon against impurity. Our Lady is not without a sense of irony when dispatching our enemies. To use the very symbol they have perverted, to destroy what is perverse, highlights the glory of our God. Cardinal Burke's investigation and the letter to all of the bishops regarding Our Lady of America states this regarding the Eye of Providence on the medal. Quote, Having reviewed the correspondence between Sister Mary Ephraim and her spiritual director of many years, Monsignor Paul F. Leopold, Vicar General of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati, who later became the Bishop of Evansville and then Archbishop of Cincinnati, it is clear that the devotion as proposed by Sister Mary received his approbation. In addition to the correspondence by which Monsignor Leopold declared the approval of the devotion, he also carried out the first of Our Lady of America's requests made through Sister Mary Ephraim. Namely, he had a medal struck with the image of Our Lady of America on one side and the coat of arms of the Christian family on the other. The coat of arms symbolically represents the substance of the private revelation received by Sister Mary Ephraim, namely the indwelling of the Holy Trinity in the Christian home, which is the source of life and unity in the family. The coat of arms points to the purity and selflessness of love in the family because of the indwelling of the Holy Trinity, the model of which is the Mother of God, under her title, of the Immaculate Conception, patroness of our nation. Our Lady of America called for a statue of herself, Our Lady of America, to be solemnly processed into the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. This shrine is located at the Basilica, which is in Washington, D.C. Our Lady of America has promised that if the bishops will solemnly process the statue, 
of Our Lady of America into the National Shrine, that the shrine would become a spiritual center of purity for the United States and the entire world. Our Lady said that more miracles than Lourdes and Fatima would occur at the National Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, but that these miracles would be spiritual. It is clear that Our Lady and Heaven wish to reclaim the Eye of Providence for the Catholic Church, not to baptize it, but for us to recall its authentic Catholic status within Catholic tradition. The question we have to ask ourselves is simply this, do we trust the Church Jesus Christ founded and the Magisterium guided by the Holy Spirit, no matter how personally corrupt some in the Magisterium are? The answer of every Catholic with faith should be a resounding yes. It does not matter how many infiltrators there are in the church, if we know their names or their positions they occupy. While this information could prove helpful, ultimately God has promised us that the gates of hell will not prevail against his body, which is his one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. Our Lady of America's final warnings are ominous, but also hopeful. February 22, 1972 When a picture or statue of myself as Our Lady of America is placed in the home and honored there, then will my son bless his people with peace. Believe in me, dear child, believe in me, for my love will never fail you. November 22, 1980. Message to the Leadership of the United States, Our Lady of America. It is the United States that is to lead the world to peace. If the United States is faithful to this mandate from heaven, and yet fails in the pursuit of peace because the rest of the world will not accept its leadership or cooperate, then the United States will not be burdened with the punishment that will come. 1981 the shortness of time and a terrible purification that is to fall upon all nations. Sister Mary Ephraim is told of the shortness of time allotted to us to pray and make the necessary sacrifices to bring about world peace. There is an urgency about Our Lady's warnings of a terrible purification that is to fall upon all nations. She advises us to pray the family rosary with as many family members present as possible and to pray the prayer of the Immaculate Conception patroness of the United States, because the forces of evil are enveloping the world. Our Lady warns their hatred is now particularly focused on the United States because of the divine mandate given to it to lead the world to peace. April and July 1981 Special Warnings from Our Lady and Our Lord on the Insidiousness of Evil Dear child, evil is so insidious that it often passes for good. The simple and pure of heart alone can detect the difference. Also, many good works are thwarted and destroyed by well-intentioned people who are manipulated by the powers of evil because they do not possess that finer sense of being able to detect a false spirit from a true one. In the winter of 1984, Our Lady came to Sister Mary Ephraim with this final message. What happens to the world depends upon those who are living in it. There must be much more good than evil prevailing in order to prevent the Holocaust that is so near approaching. Yet I tell you, my daughter, that even should such a destruction happen because there were not enough souls who took my warning seriously, there will remain a remnant untouched by the chaos who, having been faithful in following me and spreading my warnings, will gradually inhabit the earth again with their dedicated and holy lives. These souls will renew the earth in the power and light of the Holy Spirit, and these faithful children of mine will be under my protection and that of the holy angels, and they will partake of the life of the divine trinity in a most remarkable way. Let my dear children know this, precious daughter, so that they will have no excuse if they fail to heed my warnings. As America and the rest of the world bathe in the impurity of pornography and other sins against the Sixth and Ninth Commandment, now is the time for us, 
the laity to heed her call from heaven. In the description box below, you will find a copy of a letter you may send to your bishop asking them to carry out this request from Our Lady of America. You will also find a link from the USCCB to all of the bishops in the United States, which you can use to quickly locate your bishop and his email. Let us pray and petition our bishops to fulfill the request of Our Lady of America, which has already been approved by Cardinal Burke and Archbishop Leopold. Let us pray that her request will be fulfilled. Our Lady of America, ora pro nobis. presentation. You know, I put a premium on the bishops and the authority of the church, and when they speak to an apparition, I have to listen. And so, in this case, you heard me discuss at the end of the video how down in the description box I would put a link to a letter that you could send to petition the bishops regarding processing a statue of Our Lady of America into the Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, D.C. Now, a handful of bishops last year who were involved in the diocese uh, surrounding Sister Mary Ephraim, they came to the conclusion that her, uh, I guess, almost like interlocutions, but really more so in the imagination, that they were not of divine nature. However, they said that the devotion is fine for a, a private devotion. And they found Sister Mary Ephraim to be a very holy woman, and she certainly had no ill will towards any of this. Archbishop Leopold, told the, towards the end of his life, uh, said he wasn't sure if the apparition was real or not. And we have to listen to our bishops. Now, it seems like the door might still be open. And I personally am going to temper things a little bit, although I am going to take up some of the devotions myself just to see 
Um, I think that when you look at a situation like, for instance, the uh, devotion to the uh, divine mercy, right? That was just outright rejected right away. There was no if, ands, or uh, buts about that. It was completely rejected. In any case, this does not seem to be like the divine mercy devotion when it initially went through its rejection at all. This seems to be more of, uh, you know, you still get to keep the uh, devotion privately if you wish. And so that's a positive, and we'll see if there's good fruit in the future. And if not, that's okay. I don't hang my hat on any particular apparition, although I do find Our Lady of Fatima to be particularly important for our times. But that said, my faith is in Jesus Christ and the church he founded, not any particular apparition. And so that said, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you'd like to make a donation to me personally down in the description box, I put a lot of hard work into this video. I'd be grateful for that. Um, I'll just uh, put that there. Also, if you want to become a Patreon member for Knights of Christendom, that would be wonderful. Uh, that information will be down there as well. Please like this video. Please share it because, uh, you know, that shows me that you're interested in my work and what I'm doing. And it helps boost it in the YouTube algorithms. And so it'll get out there for everybody. I hope you found it spiritually fruitful. Please pray for me. Pray for each other. God bless you.